applying to become an air traffic control specialist for the FAA? To achieve your goal, you will first have to pass the three-hour air traffic skills assessment, or in short, the ETSA test. In the next few minutes, I'll go over the most important things you need to know about the test, including crucial tips on some of the test's most challenging sections. Let's dive right in. The process of becoming an air traffic controller can be very long and may go on for a couple of years. It consists of several screening stages. USA Jobs Application, the Air Traffic Skills Assessment, Security Clearance, Background Check, Drug Screening, Physical Exam, the MMPI Test, and a Medical Examination. The most difficult part of this process is the ATSA test, or ETSA test. If you fail this test, you will not move on to later stages. But passing it is not enough. You want to score high on the ETSA test as the competition is very high. Before we go into the ETSA 7 sections and show you some sample questions, here are five important facts about the test. The ETSA test is about three, three and a half hours long, the test itself is 2 hours and 49 minutes long, but you get 30 minutes of break time that you can divide into small breaks throughout the test. The ETSA test possible scores are Best Qualified, Well Qualified, Qualified, or Not Referred. You should aim to get Best Qualified to maximize your chances of getting a tentative offer letter moving you to later stages of the FAA hiring process. Your ATSA score is valid for three years, but if you feel you want to improve your score, you can reapply and retake the test whenever there's an open bid. You are not allowed pen and paper on the test. The ETSA test is comprised of seven separate sections and can be divided into two main categories, gamified sections and non-gamified sections. The Air Traffic Skills Assessment seven sections or subtests are first memory game differences, second memory game variables, spatial or visual relationship, ATC radar simulation, logical reasoning word problems, a personality test, and reading comprehension. The first four sections are gamified, some more than others, while the last three subtests are not. After taking the first four sections, you will be asked to contact the test administrator to set up the last three sections. Let's see some example and crucial tips for these sections, starting with the two memory games. Both memory sections test your ability to calculate basic math operations while memorizing numbers and variables. See for yourself how the first memory game works. This is taken from my ATSA test prep. In the beginning of the test, you are shown two numbers between one and nine, and you need to type in the difference between them. Sounds easy, right? Immediately after, you are shown a new number and again, you need to type the difference between the last two numbers shown. Can you recall the last number? Don't get confused with the number you typed in two seconds ago. This may sound easy, but doing this eight times, each time for a few minutes, will result in mental fatigue. The second memory game is much more difficult and grows in difficulty as you progress between the section three tests. The first test will show you three variables on the screen. Immediately after, you are asked what B is, what C is, and what A is. There are 10 questions like this one in the first test, and the variables can be mixed, not always in the easy order of A, B, C. In the second test, one of the variables is shown in an equation. For example, A equals B plus C. The third test is the hardest. Try it for yourself. Can you answer what number each variable represents? Write your answer in the comments below and let me know how long it took you to solve it. To make this test easier to solve, I highly recommend using a method and practicing it beforehand. Some proven methods are saying the numbers you see out loud, or rhythmically singing them, using your fingers to remember each number, or associating the numbers to different parts of your body. For example, 
A is your left hand, B is your chest, and C is your right hand. Let's move on to another important section on the test, the gamified ATC radar simulation test. On the ATC simulation, the screen is filled with balls or planes. Each plane has a number between 1 and 9 and has a specific course decided by its speed and direction coming into the screen. Obviously, some of the planes may collide, and your job is to prevent these collisions by pressing the number key for the colliding plane. If you fail to prevent a collision, the balls become red and your score will be affected. Now the ATC theme starts easy, and it won't be too difficult to prevent all collisions, but the latter parts of the subtest are much harder. The planes will come into the screen much faster, and you will also be instructed to answer math questions while preventing collisions. Each avoided collision will affect your score, but you are also scored on your effectiveness. This means you shouldn't remove any plane if you don't absolutely have to. In some cases, you can even prevent two collisions by removing only one plane, making you very effective. Here are five crucial tips for the ATC radar simulation and for the whole test. Practice your numpad. On the actual test, you'll be instructed to remove the balls from the screen using only the numerical keypad on the right side of the keyboard. During the ATC sim, your eyes will be on the screen all the time and you won't have time to check where is the 8 key and where is the 2 key? Make sure you practice beforehand. Collisions are much more important. I heard from several candidates that they scored best qualified without answering more than 2 or 3 math questions. It is much more important to prevent collisions. If the screen is clear of collisions, try to answer the math problems as they will help your general score, but make sure you are prepared to tackle collisions when a new round starts. Ignore corner collisions. Some collisions are just impossible to prevent. Here and there, two planes will meet in the corner at the very start of the simulation. With all the pressure of the test, these corner collisions can distract you and hurt your performance on the simulation. Don't overthink these collisions and accept that from time to time you will miss one. I assure you, no one prevents all collisions. Now, the last two tips are true for the ATC theme and for the rest of the test too. Read the instructions carefully. It doesn't matter that you know everything there is to know on the ETSA test. I know you read everything on Reddit and on the ATC sites, but all this doesn't matter. On test day, listen to every word from the administrator and read every word on the test. I can't stress this enough. The FAA Air Traffic Pre-Employment Test is known to change its format every few years, and it is your job to be prepared for anything they throw at you. This important tip completes the previous one. Practice as much as you can. On the actual test, whenever you are given the chance to practice the subtest before taking it, use it. Use it a number of times, until you feel you are at your best. Make sure you understand the format and accustom to the keyboard. Again, if you already know the section and practiced at home many times, use the practice run given in the actual test. In the ATSA test prep, you will find accurate practice tests for all seven sections, including both gamified and non-gamified sections. If you want to see more ads, sample questions, and get an in-depth look at the test, you are welcome to visit the dedicated ATSA page. If you have any questions or comments about the ATSA test, Please write them in the comment section below or send me a direct email. All the important links are in the description. That's it for now. Thank you for watching. What are you still doing here? Go study! Good luck!